Welcome to Factorio Base in the Book. My name is Nilaus, and today we're going to do a base review and base tour of the base that uh, I would call my base in the book stage two. So if you've been following the series previously here on YouTube, then I had a stage one where I had basically blue assemblers and red belts, as well as Mark one modules. Now this is sort of where I would say this base is complete, this starter base or <laughs> whatever you want to call it is actually complete. And we are now using, we're using the maximum potential of what this base can do sort of without radical changes and uh, sort of extending it with what we can like blue belts, yellow, uh, yellow assemblers and modules and beacons where appropriate. And what I'll do in this video is go through all of it so that you can understand how and why these decisions are made and hopefully be inspired so that when you build your own base, you can, you can take some of these concepts and improve them and implement them. Now, of course, there is a, the, blueprint it's called base in a book so there is a specific blueprint that takes all of this thing and puts it into a blueprint book so that you can if you want to build a base you really want to get started on a mega base but you don't bother with the hassle of building 30 hours to start a base then you go into a new game creative mode stamp this down and then you got a base that's completely operational you just need to feed it a bit of materials from outputs but also that is uh, blueprinted so that's uh, that's really important thing for for, for you so that you know how to use it. Also, of course, if you've been following along, there'll be any changes will be sort of in the incremental here. You can see every single episode has a dedicated blueprint where it highlighted what is changed from the previous episode. All of these are available. There is a link in the description below. That link takes me to my website. And on that website, there's a link to each of these blueprint books because this blueprint book is gigantic. So it doesn't really cater itself to sharing in in that so there are different links to each one of the episodes so uh, it should be readily available it's using factorio bin which is a super nice w website for sharing blueprints easily now let's dive in just so you to highlight we're going to go through smelting trains outposts production science power and defense all the things that make up a base and we're going to start with the theme it should come as no surprise that this is a city block base and it's a main bus base well if you've been following what i've been doing uh, then this is kind of my go-to pattern. City blocks gives really good structure on what is where, gives easy access for us to move around the base. And the uh, the bus is a really, really convenient way. I know that people love to hate it. I was like, oh, it's a cookie cutter and it's a noob and it's not efficient. Well, I don't agree. It's cookie cutter, yeah, absolutely. But sometimes the best solution is uh, the best, uh, the most popular solution is the best solution. And that's why it's the popular solution. You can do a million other things, but if you want to build a base that goes from nothing to where I am now, then uh, you can gradually grow it with with a main bus. And that's why I'm, I prefer it. It's also really easy to to understand what is going on here. And that's, uh, that's really important. Uh, how, that's really funny. I'm just looking at some things that are not updated. All right. So this part here is not updated to blue belts. Not all of it, at least. All of this is, yeah, I've not updated this part. And that's a very much deliberate. So it's just a little bit of thing that wasn't done. But you can see our robots are very diligent on getting it to work. All right. Let's start with the science part. Because uh, that's kind of giving us a baseline of what kind of base this is. And this base is, well, it's running around, I'm going to say around 300 per minute. That's kind of my target. That's what I've been aiming for, 300 science per minute. That's not a lot. It's not a lot. Um, but it's it's really enough to get you going and get sort of start working on some mining productivity, some artillery range, some robot speed. Those are the things you need. And maybe once in a while, maybe some some energy weapon damage so that you can go into the mega base because this is what this whole base is about. This base is about getting us into a mega base domain, which will be the future of this series. I'm going to restart it and get them go into a mega base in the book. So that is what we do. The overall structure of the base, if you in case you haven't watched any of the let's play, then I'm just going to go through it just for you now. It comes in trains are coming with materials. We're going to go into more detail with that. It goes into on one side, it goes into a split of iron and steel uh, so that each train will automatically be split between iron and steel automatically. And there are three of those. So I have a total of 12 red lanes of iron coming out and uh, I don't know, less than that for <laughs> steel. Obviously every five of these or every 10 of these gives one full belt. So there are 12 of those. So it's a bit more than one belt. It's yeah, a bit more than one belt of uh, 
No, it's actually... It's a lot of steel. Let's let's just do that. We have this mod here that I'm going to use for that. There we go. I'm getting 12 per second, so it's 12 plus 12 plus 12, 36 per second. Yeah, it's a bit more than one red belt. Not a lot, though. Then we have some stone and stone bricks and landfill down here. We have eight lanes plus eight lanes of copper, so it's 16 lanes of copper. That's actually more copper than iron. And I found that this split here works really well in all stages of the game. And it's a really good balance. You can see fl they are flowing. What I've done here is then moving up. Oh, sorry for the flickering. I don't know if I wanted to show it from the map view. I'm going to skip this section because this is uh, something that was added a bit later. But the first thing we built on the bus was a hub. This is our hub where we built everything. And this is where everything is just now available. They go into logistics network. And we have our builder train so that we can from take the train and go anywhere we want on the train network and start building new outposts, which is what we're going to do with our mega base design. On the other side, we have the first thing that you're going to need a lot of green circuits. There are a number of iterations of this build. So that you go from just the basics, a tiny bit of, uh, of yellow belts in and out, and then up to this thing, which is sort of the same structure, but uh, now it has a lot of more modules. It is not a mega base build, as you can see, because it's not using like the optimal number of modules and beacons what i'm getting out here is six full lanes of green circuits very nice moving up to the next stage here this is going to be our first science part you get red green and military science as well as the science facility this science facility is fine it works it, it does what it's supposed to up here this is uh, pre mainly because there's room for it i make solar panels and accumulators as well as laser turrets because they have the same inbound resources that's really convenient to have it here what i then want to do is i want to go into at, at this stage uh, go into the blue science all of these things are sort of my basic designs for my master classes but then they have been updated and i really should go through my master class again and re uh, re redo these and at least redo the upgrade uh, blueprint. I should. One day when I have too much time, I'll do that. But in order to do blue signs, then we are going to go get some red circuits. Red circuits has the big problem that it um, this design is working fine to the beginning. It's super slow to build. And in this case, even though it's this base, I'm only using the Mark 1 belts. The reason why I'm using only Mark 1, no, not Mark 1 belts, Mark 1 inserters here, ah, Mark 1 modules, is because if I look at, um, can I do that? No, I can't. If I do this part, how many do we have? We have 168 and then times four inserters, uh, four modules. That's way too many modules for my base to support. And it's a really inefficient pattern. So I'm going to keep it like this, but if I, I will place it with inbounds coming, coming in. Uh, and this one, the reason why I can keep it like this is because it also matches our plastic consumption and and our green circuits and not copper. Copper we have plenty of. But scaling this one up is not going to help me because then I would also need to scale up my plastic, which I don't have abilities to play them. So a lot of these things are very balanced towards each other. And scaling one thing up doesn't really help if you don't scale up all the other resources. Uh, one, we'll go back down to this location. This is my oil location. At first it's empty, but then it goes into oil. Also becomes my copper train inbound. This is one of my pride, my best designs. It does, it does all of the oil for the space, potentially outputting 1800 petroleum per second. So it's really nice. Get some sulfur, sulfuric acid and some plastic. And currently we are running a bit low on the oil. I don't really know why. Is it this one? Yeah, it's definitely this one. So we need to get more oil in. That's something we need to do. Moving on up on the bus base, because this is uh, just giving you a highlight. We got the blue, purple, and yellow signs. And yellow signs is also taking care of making robots. On the other side, that's a bit of a, a mashup of things that need to be done. We got our our batteries. This, is, this battery can, obviously, you can see that it can be updated with beacons here but it's not necessary right now and also modules not necessary so i'm not doing it it could save a bit on the oil but you know it's not really a lot of them are working here i have a special thing this is uh just because it's the only place that i really had room for it and i wanted it this is just making lots and lots of concrete for us so we can pave the world and make it look as nice as these paths the Big issue here is always going to be green circuits. You can see the green circuits are not quite filling up the belts entirely. 
But, you know, it's almost going and this is going to be the bottleneck. And, well, it sort of fluctuates between whether it's the greens that are running short or the reds that are running short. Right now, it's the reds that are running short because I'm lacking plastic and oil coming in. Here we have the next, the ro rocket parts up here looking good. And on the last side, I have the things that are like the final pieces. We have like a little build of all the th sort of things we need for, yeah, for expansion. The item grids and a automatic creation of spider trons if you want to and then modules super important this is actually turning out to be the most important part of the base the only thing this base will be doing in the future is making stuff for expansion like belts and assemblers that kind of thing making a bit of science which will gradually be taken out and then making modules so eventually this thing here will be replaced and up here we have the rocket launcher not really much it is quite deliberate that i do not have these highlighted or I don't have them moduled because it's not really needed. I don't need to module them, but I'm going to make this pattern so that you know that this is how it can be done. Up here, we have our pride and joy, our nuclear power plants, three of those. And that uh, means we just jump over in the sequence and look at the power. Power is pretty damn good. If we look at it, I have some solar panels. These are being early on and then going into nuclear power up here. Now, there isn't really a, a good reason why I do both. I, I do both because I to get the solar panels before I get the nuclear power. And I just don't really feel like removing it at that stage. And also it gets sort of a nice feel that we have solar panels out here and we get the nuclear up here. I could make two more nuclear power plants if I wanted to, but it'll be a bit of a mess with the belt, the, the, the water input input. So that's something um, you can do. But this base is never ever going to be using all of this power. So with this power, you're good. You could even do a lot less, but this has the advantage that it's symmetric. So that was looking at the science production and power. So let's have a look a bit of a deep dive into the smelting part, because I know that a lot of people will comment that the smelting is bad, wrong, incorrect, all that thing. At this place in the base, this is where we are continuously launching rockets and I'm ready to do expansion while the base is just chugging along, making science. <clears throat> if I could just support it more oil, that's the way. So this, uh, so one of the key points that I always, always, always get is why do you use the steel furnace and not the, the electric furnace? Well, electric furnaces are not better. They take more space and they, they don't, they're not faster. So the only reason for me to upgrade from this thing that's working and using coal, whatever, uh, the only thing to, for reason for me to upgrade from this to any new design is if I want to replace it with electric modules that have beacons in it, because replacing steel furnace with electric furnace really does nothing. It, it does nothing. Yeah, it does a bit of pollution, but uh, is that really something we care about? Uh, pollution, one per minute, pollution, Four per minute. So definitely more pollution. The power, uh, hold on, what was the power? The power was 100 kilowatt and that's less. So it also takes more power, depending of course how you get the power, you get it from solar, that's not a problem. So replacing this serves really no purpose for me. Lowering pollution is kind of a trivial thing for me. I, I, I feel like because we have a perimeter, which we'll come back to. So. In order for me to replace it, I would have to replace it with something that's modulated and beaconed so that I could get four blue belts out instead of four red belts out. Now, that's not something I can do at this moment because if I do this, I can look at modules. This are the modules I have. I don't even have a single Mark III module because they are coming into my inventory. Not a single one. Not a single one. They are being put into my builder train. That's why they're not, they're not here. So I don't have a surplus of modules and all the modules I want to build, I want to use them for expansion into Megabase, not for this. So this one, if replaced with modules, I don't know, I'm going to say 500 modules, plus 500 modules, plus 500, plus 500, plus 500. That's a ton of modules you need to build. And what are you getting out of it? A slight increase. And I'd rather just go like, yeah, whatever, just mine some more materials. That's why I don't do this, because this means that I can have the same design from the very beginning of the base with the yellow belts and the stone furnaces and go upgrade it all the way to this point. And it works absolutely brilliantly. Could take things here as well, upgrade this, make it blue. I, get, I left it deliberately as red because upgrading this to blue serves absolutely no purpose. If it comes out as reds, it's not going to make a difference if it goes in as blue. So you can upgrade it for convenience, but that's the reason why I do this. Now, 
trains, outposts. Train system is absolutely fantastic. I get a lot of questions about logistics train network and like, oh, uh, because I've been using it a lot uh, before, well, earlier. And so, and I have tutorials on it, like why am I not using it? Uh, are you gonna use it? What would you recommend? My recommendation, you get it here. Don't use logistics train network anymore. The key point of main, of using logistics train network is completely redundant now with the addition of this limit set. I'm not gonna go through this one. I have a masterclass that goes through this. And so I'm not gonna go through it. I also have an episode where I set up the many to many train network. You can search on my YouTube channel in the playlist. It says many to many train network and it's pretty good, I think, and has disproportionate amount of views. The idea here, I'm just gonna explain the idea. The idea is that I have a lot of trains here, nine trains. They're all shared between the, all the inputs and all of the output. No, yeah, all of the mining locations and all of the smelting input locations, they share all the nine trains and the train stations limit the number of trains it can have as enabled here from zero to six, I guess. And then it will similarly for these locations, they will simply, this one will tell how many trains can be filled up at this location, two, 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 that's good. And they will then add the trains here. This one's also getting in, what do you have? You have one. So you can get trains and there we go, because it's one, it'll get one train in that's gonna wait here. Then they're gonna wait at this point until these start requesting, oops, these start requesting. So it's self-balancing, self-balances between between the out, the mining locations and between the drop-off locations back here in base, and it works absolutely brilliant. No reason to do any change to that. Let's talk a bit about outposting. All of my outposts are exactly the same format, except this one is yellow, so let's not look at that. Look at this. This is a very simple format. I. I really like this way because what I'm doing here is I'm taking the first to top four lines and going in here, the second four lines going in here. I could sort of make it into those eight lines going into an eight to eight splitter and then split it out. It probably would be better sort of further down the line, but the idea is that I could make like two or three or however many, or in case of this, just one. It's exactly the same pattern. Do I have another one that's uh, this one, right? It's the same pattern. It's just repeated this pattern again down here. That's the very re the intention of it is that you repeat the same pattern, which means you can make bigger mining operations. And it makes it super simple. It's copy paste. When I needed to set up a new build, I literally just copy this thing here and then find another location such as I did there. And then we can like build it at this location and then just hook it up and then it works, except that I copied an iron to a copper location. And that would be a bad time generally. So outposting is is designed not for maximum efficiency, but for ease of setup. I don't want to set up a new location and then figure out like, okay, this is gonna be called Iron 17, and that means I need to reroute the trains. No, they're all gonna be called the same. They're just gonna be called Mining Iron, and then the train system will figure out the rest. That's the brilliant part about the train system and the outposting in general. The last thing I wanna to touch on is this, the defense, because I, it is uh, it consists of two things. It consists a ring, no, three things actually. It consists of uh, three things. It's a ring, a ring around my base. This is not updated at all. It's kind of deliberate that I didn't update it because I want to show that you don't really need to update it. I have one belt going all the way around the base. You can see some of these still have the old belts That's because they, they simply haven't been using this enough, but then you gradually just put in the new ammo on the belt and it'll gradually replace itself in the way places where they're actually being attacked. Having flamethrowers, absolutely amazing. I use crude oil because I don't really bother with having uh, using light oil for it because then it has to take capacity from my oil production and I don't want to use capacity from my oil production for this. So I just feed it crude oil immediately and I can live without those that damage modifier of uh, plus 10%. And that's, that's actually the key part here is that if I use the light oil, even though it's better, then I take capacity out of this and I need all the capacity of this for the rest of the base. So that's why I do it like this. This is absolutely uh, said, uh, absolutely sufficient. What I can do is you can expand it something like, something like this and then make some laser turrets that we absolutely have. You can make like laser turrets in between here. I think this is something like that I've been doing uh, previously. And it, it's it's pretty good, but ultimately it's also completely irrelevant because I wanted to see if I I didn't have to, and I don't have to. 
I, I don't have to. They, they are never going to be breached. So let's uh, have a look at the, here's a nice little attack that's sort of representative of where this base is. And yeah, it's going to be poking and prodding and it's going to get something inbound. I don't really care about it. I have the, I have the robots, they'll fix it. And it's good. Laser turrets, sure, if you want to. I don't care. Um, so I didn't, didn't build it. That's the one part. That's the strong ring around my base. Of course, you need to have a belt all the way around. Then I have my, well, I'm going to call it my patented not a wall. This is my patented not a wall. It is absolutely sufficient to, to take away casual attacks from uh, biters. Like these things, they will just gradually grow. If you look at pollution range, they will just, they're sitting in pollution. They'll build up an attack force, they'll go in, and they might knock down a laser turret or two, and I don't really care. So what I do in this one, I've started implementing like a perimeter around. I don't think I want that. Instead, what I want is having some roaming spider trons, one, two, three, four roaming spider trons. I can just leave them up here. They'll be uh, equipped. Let me go back to myself. They'll be equipped to do repairs, to repair, and get some laser turrets, replacement laser turrets. Actually, it should probably also have some replacement here so that it can also replace that. And of course, have lots and lots of rockets. That will be serving a, serving the purpose of running around, repairing things around, so I don't have to go down here if I need to repair things, and also just pushing back if I feel that some of these are getting a bit too, uh, too close, then uh, I can do that. And one Spiratron is it's fine for now. Later on, you might want to just have two Spidertron if you're going to go out and take out those bigger bases like this. And you want at least two Spidertrons sort of tag teaming it. And this might seem simple. And I've had a lot of questions like, when are you going to do a proper wall? I'm not. I don't build walls out there. I don't bother. It's a, it's a lot of extra logistics to go out there and build walls. And I found that it's not necessary. It's just not necessary. So I don't do it. Uh, when I need to do expansion, then I take a train like this. This is my artillery location. I put, take the artillery train out and then I start spamming out here. Then I reinforce the walls and stand here to do the repairs. And then once I've done with the, with the expansion, I can, uh, I can retire that location. You can see the spider town just walking through these small locations. It's super simple. And that's also taking care of all the base defenses for us. It's pretty simple. And you can also see this line here, it uses I could might as well just take this one and go straight down and it wouldn't really it wouldn't use more uh, laser turrets it actually use yet less laser turrets my intention for expansion because that then now we've gone through the smelting the trains the outpost the production the science the power the defense good now you get a good feel of how the space works by the way it's totally deliberate that i'm only bringing things in from one side the way it works with my with ore generation i really should pay more attention to your spidertron yeah, well, it's fine. It's at less than a bit less than half health. Uh, it's so bit. Also, maybe don't do that. Okay, maybe you just need a bit of a break. That's actually pretty good that we see that. So you can see it's okay, but once in a while you need to do it. that. By the way, that uh, mod is a mod called Beatrix. Yeah, that uh, wants you with robots and stuff when they take damage. It's kind of kind of nice. Also made for for me, but is on the mod portal as well. They are now repaired. Go on. <clears throat> what was saying? Yeah. So ore generation means that the further you go from your starting location, which was, I believe, here or something, uh, there, I guess, it is that it, you get bigger patches. So this one's 33, while the ones that are close, they are smaller. Uh, 23. Wow. Yeah. And basically, if you go further out, you get bigger. And it also simplifies the train system. So I'm basically never going to be exploring up here. I'm just going to be expanding downwards in sort of this, this pattern here. That's where I'm going to be expanding. It's kind of shitty with all the water, but that's just the way it is. Sometimes you're lucky, sometimes you're not. And, and that's the intention. So what I'm going to do from here on and when I need to go into a mega base. Now, what I need to do as a mega base is I can't expand this much further. I could uh, get the trains in and then replace this but ultimately i don't really have a lot more room for 
additional builds. So what I need to do is start replacing things in the base with things outside the base. So having a distributed system instead, instead of collecting everything. Right now I bring raw materials in and then I process and build and smelt and all that stuff in here. But gradually I'm going to take things out. Out here I'm going to build some smelting locations. I'm going to build some green circuit location. I'm going to build plastic location. I'm going to build red circuit location. I'm going to build science location so that eventually it's going to be higher quality products that come back to the base and then I'll replace sort of all of this stuff first. I'll replace the the smelting, I'll replace the green circuit, the red circuit, the plastic, and sort of just replacing things gradually until we have a place where we only take in science. This is also why we have a number of empty slots out here for trains, so I can get the trains in and uh, and output. Also, these trains are specifically designed as one four train, one locomotive, and four wagons. That's not really great if you want to build a mega base. So I'm going to do a two eight train or basically a one eight one, one locomotive, eight wagons, and one. Uh, one wagon, uh, locomotive at the end and uh, that, there's a reason for it but we'll get into that and then I'll start doing the signs out here as we push out and that's going to be the upcoming series I hope you want to follow along with the new series called Mega Basing in the Book so now you have all of what you need to build a nice base that does 300 signs per minute and can sort of help you build a mega base and now I'm going to show you how to do a mega base I don't have a specific target for how big I want this mega base but you know what We'll see it as it comes. And it also depends very much on you guys. So I have a promise to continue this series for as long as there are templates of the path supporting the, the channel. And we're now up to 28 episodes and there are still uh, some more to go. So, um, so I'm going to continue working on this series and make sure that everyone who is supporting at the on Patreon at the Templar of the Path level will get an episode so that uh, that's kind of my tribute to the lovely patrons who are supporting the channel. And without you, it just wouldn't be possible for me to run a YouTube channel on such a niche niche game as Factorio. It just wouldn't be possible. So thank you so much to all the patrons who are supporting, N not just the Templars, but at any uh, any pledge level that is super absolutely amazing so thank you all the patrons and of course um make sure that you subscribe to the channel i do a lot of these kind of things so uh like factory game factor factory game factory games like factorio satisfactory dyson sphere program auction not included you know those kind of things and uh, also other things and of course if you want to be part of the design process into a mega base then come on over to my twitch i'm streaming factorio on twitch at Twitch TV slash Nilaus, and it's on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays at 8 p.m. Central European time. I hope to see you there. The other days I'm streaming something else, which you're also welcome to join. I'm gonna wrap this one up here. Leave it, leave it uh, with you. There will be links in the description below to a complete blueprint book of all of what you see here. So thank you very much for watching. Thank you for following, liking, sharing, and giving the good comments so so I can improve myself. Thank you. See you next time. Until then, take care, and as always. Stay effective.